Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be uploading a new Winter Thoughts video. We have a lot more to go over, so many updated factors that we need to show you guys. I'm so excited to go over it. See you guys in just a moment. Now before I get into the video, I would like to remind you to like the video and leave a comment down below because those two things have been helping me out so much lately. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know how excited are you for this upcoming winter? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at our sea surface temperature anomalies. I always start out with this because I think this is the biggest causation in the weather around the globe. That's always been my opinion that the water temperatures drive the weather around the entire world uh, and that's always been kind of how I felt. So let's go over it. It all starts with the water and as you can see, we do have some cooler waters in our PDO region. Our PDO region is, by the way, offshore of Alaska, Canada, and the western United States there. So as you can see in the waters mostly near Alaska and Canada, you can see there is some warmer waters there. That's kind of pointing towards a positive PDO. But as we move more towards the United States and Canada, we do see there's a blue blob in between uh, kind of like Mexico and Hawaii there, that is kind of pointing towards a negative PDO. But overall, this has moved more towards a positive PDO than a negative one so far uh, in the last couple of weeks since I uploaded a, this has been about two weeks since my last Winter Thoughts video. So yeah, about two weeks. Our ENSO here, which is south of that region, that is where our El Nino or La Nina will set up. And really, this has moved more towards a La Nina. So we're going to talk more about that as well. And the Atlantic overall has just warmed in general. Let's take a look at, uh, this is going to be an analog here, and this is going to be 2010 to 2011 winter. And here's the sea surface temperatures, and it looks quite similar, actually. They had a negative PDO and then a La Nina, uh, although the, the La Nina was a little bit stronger than the one we're expecting to be possible this winter. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Also, the Gulf and the East Coast aren't necessarily colder than normal, uh, but Again, we'll talk about that. The waters offshore of Greenland and Canada there in the Atlantic Ocean are very similar, though. So there's a lot of similarities there with this year and that analog there. I think that's a really good one, 2010 to 2011. Let's take a look at the seven-day change across the entire globe here. As you can see, a lot of warming has taken place in the northern Pacific near the kind of western coast there of North America. Also, a lot of cooling has gone down in our Ento region, and then a lot of cooling has happened offshore of the east coast near Bermuda as well, and some warming north of there as well. So there's been many changes. Here's the Atlantic Ocean's temperature anomalies. This isn't the seven-day change. This is the this temperature anomaly straight up. As you can see, mostly warm, especially near, again, Canada and Greenland, just like 2010. That kind of points towards a negative NAO being possible in the wintertime. And this is the seven-day change. There's that cold blob offshore of kind of the northeastern United States and offshore of Canada as well, near Bermuda. There's been significant cooling in that region. Now what we're going to do in a moment is move on and take a look at our charts for multiple different regions, including our Nino 3.4 index, which is how we measure the El Nino or La Nina. We're going to take a look at the entire North Atlantic, and then we're going to take a look at some other charts forecasting our ENSO, and then even take a look at some model guidance later on for this upcoming winter. All right, now here we are taking a look here at our Nino 3.4 index. And this was last updated on July 12th. This is the one I used in my last Winter Thoughts video. And it kind of was like, wow, this might be heading towards an El Nino. Look at that. It's been just heading positive consistently. Um, this is how a lot of stocks have looked basically since this, the end of 2020 into 2021. This is pretty much how every stock has looked. But uh, this is the update as of July 30th. Look at that. It is really just since July 12th, pretty much crashed and burned. Uh, we've seen this one go all the way towards kind of approaching negative 0.2 degrees Celsius, which is almost a weak La Nina. It's like halfway to a weak La Nina. So this has basically just completely crashed um, since then. I'm, I'm using stock terminology here in a weather video. Uh, but these charts always remind me of that. They, they move in the same way too. It's very interesting actually. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at the North Atlantic, and this was as of July 12th again, and as you can see, it was cooling, it had a warming period there, but it was generally cooling, and this is our most recent update, and wow, it has warmed up since then, basically, literally on that date, it almost stopped cooling by that point that we 
ended on July 12th, and it just went straight in the positive direction ever since then. And now July 30th, you can see we basically peaked out. So very, very interesting there. Now here is our model prediction for the ENSO. Uh, th this is from July 2021, so this is for this month, obviously. Uh, but as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have dates like SON, for instance, that's September, October, November. We see DJF, that's the important one because that's December, January, February. Meteorological winter starts on December 1st and it ends on the very last day of February. So that is the period we are mostly looking for. And as you can see, most of these are below that black line, the very dark black line. That is the line that basically is the difference between an El Nino and a La Nina. But a lot of these are close to a neutral ENSO, which as you can see near that black line, there's a 0 0.5 and then a negative 0 0.5. Anywhere in between that is considered to be a neutral ENSO. And that is my favorite kind of winter. And historically, in my opinion, that has led towards the most snowy and cold winters in the eastern United States. So if we can get in kind of that sweet, sweet spot there, uh, that would be a really good thing for cold and snow lovers. Uh, even a weak La Nina is much better than I would say a, a stronger La Nina. So we are going to be looking to be in a pretty favorable ENSO for cold and snow lovers. Uh, generally, weak La Ninas and neutral ENSOs are some of the best winners for the eastern United States for cold and snow lovers. They're some of the worst for uh, cold and snow haters, obviously. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at another map that shows us a little bit of an ENSO forecast. And then we're going to get into that model guidance for the winter, the updated model guidance for this upcoming winter in just a moment. Now here is a different chart. This one kind of just shows us, as you can see on the left side of that screen, the probability and percentage of any of these individual types of ENSOs happening. The gray is a neutral ENSO, the blue is a La Nina, and the red is an El Nino. So for each of these periods, if you look at the bottom of the screen again, we have the DJF, the MDJ, the OND, that's October, November, December, November, December, January, and then December, January, February. So we're watching mostly that DJF again. And as you can see, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention, spoiler alert, this is the one from the last video I uploaded, the early July. So I'm going to show you guys the most up-to-date one in just a second. But as you can see, they were calling for a 60% chance of a La Nina for DJF, a 40% chance of a neutral ENSO, and then nearly a 3% chance of an uh, El Nino or something like that. Let's take a look at the most up-to-date one. This is the mid-July update here. Uh, and as you can see, things have changed significantly from early July to mid-July because as you can see for DJF, we have a 50% chance now of a neutral ENSO, a 40% chance of a La Nina, and then a 10% chance of an El Nino. So not only has that El Nino chance gone up, but that La Nina chance has gone down and that neutral ENSO chance has gone up as well. So now it's looking like the most likely outcome is a neutral ENSO according to that specific group of models, which is super interesting. Now let's move through with this modeled forecast. I've been showing you guys this every single time. It changes significantly every single time, and I honestly don't think it really means much, but it, to take it with a, obviously a, a grain of salt for sure, uh, but mo most people enjoy seeing this. So here's the December, basically a torch. January, basically a torch. February, basically a torch for the entire winter. So in this update, here's the entire winter, and it just has a complete torch. But we've been going back and forth so much like the last time I showed you only like, again, like two weeks ago, and it was showing two cold months and one warm month. So a very cold winter. And then the time before that, it was one cold month, two warm months. So it's been going back and forth all over the place. So don't pay much mind to this. The precipitation forecast is a lot more interesting. December, we get a lot of dry conditions in the east and a, a lot of precipitation there for Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. For January, this is classic La Nina look. Very, very wet Pacific Northwest very wet Ohio Valley and central United States, and then kind of near normal conditions for the Gulf and East Coast. Then for February, we move more towards above normal precipitation for the West Coast, the East Coast, and the Ohio Valley again, uh, which is more like something in between an El Nino and a La Nina, maybe a neutral Enso there. And here's the entire winter, very classic La Nina look uh, with kind of dry for the Gulf states, dry for the Southwest, and then very wet for the Northwest and then the North Central United States, including the Ohio Valley and kind of the portions of the Deep South as well. For today's confidence tab, for obvious reasons, we're at a two out of six. That confidence will come up over the coming months, probably go up to a three as we approach late August, and then eventually a four as we reach into September, maybe a five in October, and then eventually 
Um, we'll probably stick around the five throughout November. Obviously, that's pretty high for a, for a seasonal forecast. But yes, that confidence will come up over time. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think this pattern we've been stuck in the hot in the west, warm or sorry, hot in the west, cold in the east? Although it has been kind of warm in the east too. I asked you guys when that pattern will come to an end, and James Moore said, I think the pattern will flip after a couple of weeks, and I think that might be the case as well, based on model guidance I saw this morning. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Prenental. If you would like to join this very exciting Patreon page, you can do so by joining our Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below, and also be a part of this Patreon community today as well. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hairfarms1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below as always, because that helps out the channel so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.